Here we have two lines intersecting each other. Let's call this line L and line M. As a result, they form four angles, angle one, two, three, and four. Which of these angles are vertical angles? And which ones are adjacent angles? What would you say? Vertical angles, they're across from each other and they share a common vertex. So let's put some points on this diagram. Let's call this point A. We'll call this B, C, D, and E. So angles one and three are vertical angles. They're across from each other and vertical angles are congruent. They have the same angle measure. You can also call angle one as angle ABC. Angle three is EBD or you could say DBE. Notice that these two angles, they share a common vertex, which is located at point B. So vertical angles are angles that share a common vertex. They're congruent and they exist across from each other. So one and three are vertical angles. Also two and four are vertical angles. Adjacent angles, they're angles that share the same vertex, but they also share one ray or one side. So angles one and two are adjacent angles. They're adjacent to each other. They're right next to each other. So let's write that here. So one and two are adjacent. So that would be angle ABC and angle CBD. As you can see, they share a common vertex, B. But now I'm going to color it. So that's angle one, A, B, C, and also angle two, C, B, D. The common ray or the common side that they share is ray B, C. So those are adjacent angles. They're angles that are right next to each other. They share a common vertex and they share a ray. Now, there are different types of adjacent angles. When you have a right angle and you add a ray to it, you can create two adjacent angles. In this case, angle one and angle two. Now, these two angles, even though they're adjacent, there's another special term that describes the relationship. Those angles are complementary. Complementary angles, they add up to 90 degrees. Now, two adjacent angles can also form a linear pair. When that happens, the angles add up to 180 degrees. In this case, we would say that they're supplementary angles, even though they're still adjacent to each other. So now you know the difference between vertical angles and adjacent angles. And you also know the difference between complementary angles and supplementary angles. Now let's try this problem. So we have two lines, line L and M, and we have the angles, some in terms of X and Y. Find the value of X and Y in this problem. Now let's call this angle one. I'm just gonna put a one here. We'll call this angle two and angle three, just to keep things simple. Angles one 
and 3, we know that they're vertical angles. They're across from each other. So we can set them equal to each other. So angle 1 is equal to angle 3. I wrote 2 for some reason. Angle 1 has a measure of 80 degrees. And angle 3 is 6y minus 10. So now we just have to solve for y. Let's add 10 to both sides. So we're going to have 90 is equal to 6y. And then we could divide both sides by 6. 90 divided by 6. Well, if you want to do this without a calculator, it helps if you break up 90 into 60 and 30. 60 divided by 6, that's 10. 30 divided by 6 is 5, so you get 15. So that's the value of y. y is equal to 15. Or we could say technically 15 degrees. Now what about x? Angles 1 and 2, they are adjacent. These angles are right next to each other. Now m is a line. Lines have an angle of 180. The lines are straight. So this right here is 180, which means angles 1 and 2, they're not only adjacent, but they're supplementary. So we could say that 80 plus 7x plus 16, and that's going to add up to 180. Now let's begin by subtracting both sides by 80. So we get 7x plus 16 is equal to 180 minus 80 is 100. And then we could subtract this by 16. 100 minus 16 is 84. And then divide it by 7. So 84 divided by 7. 70 goes into, I mean, 7 goes into 70 nicely. And 84 minus 70 is 14. So 70 divided by 7 is 10. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So x is going to be 12. So now we know the value of x and y. X is 12, Y is 15. Let's try this problem. So given the diagram shown below, find the values of X, Y, the angle measure of ABC, ABD, and CBE. And we're given lines L and M. So we know these two angles, they're supplementary and adjacent. And the same is true with those two angles. The problem, though, is we have two different variables, so we don't want to touch that yet. What we could do is set these two vertical angles equal to each other. And since we have only one variable, x, we could find the value of that variable. So angle ABD is congruent, or we could just say it's equal to, angle C, B, E, because they're vertical angles. Now, angle A, B, D, which is this part here, that's 4x plus 32. And C, B, E is 7x minus 4. Now, let's solve for x. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And I'm going to subtract by 4x from both sides. So we can cancel that. 32 plus 4 is 36. 7 minus 4 is 3. So we get 3x is equal to 36. Now let's divide both sides by 3. 36 divided by 3 is 12. So we now know the value of x. So now that we have that, we could find the angle measure of angle ABD. 
So angle ABD, that's 4x plus 32. Replace an x with 12. We get 4 times 12, which is 48. 48 plus 32, that's going to be 80. So the measure of angle ABD is 80. Now, ABD and CVE, they're vertical angles, so they have the same measure. Therefore, angle CBE is also 80. So this is 80 degrees, this is 80 degrees. We can easily find Y. So these two angles, they form a linear pair, they're supplementary. So Y plus 80 is 100. I mean, not 100, but 180. Subtracting both sides by 80, we have 180 minus 80. That means Y is 100 degrees. Or Y is 100, rather. The only other missing angle we need is angle ABC. So the measure of angle ABC, that's 100 degrees as well. It's related to Y. So that's how you could use the principles that govern the relationship between vertical angles and adjacent angles to solve problems like this.